was that? What was that? Gun. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. You can do this. Three, two, one. Okay, you dang kids. Stupid prank, I get it. Haha. -ha. <laughs> Welcome to another Forge AI tutorial. I guess this is the first in like a year, so not another. Welcome to <laughs> Welcome to a Forge AI tutorial where for some reason everything is being done underwater. So for the rest of the video, it's gonna sound like that. Let's get started. So first things first for AI basics, we're going to do single shot firing, multi-shot firing, and targeting attacks. So we've got our nice little, ow, we've got our nice little uh, <laughs> jackal here on one foot. Standing on this uh, nice little soda can, he's got a rifle in hand. And he is going to be scripted to shoot once every four seconds or so. With this and these lights as this projectile. So we'll see the lens flare when you're standing head on and if you're looking at it, you'll see the beam. Keep in mind, it doesn't matter what objects you use for your projectile. The only thing that matters is the script. So I've spawned in a script brain. You also don't need to use a script brain to do this. It's just easier to keep track of these. And the single, the only script you need is this. So round time, every four seconds, it will do it. If this is on, it will do it every four seconds. This script brain is going to send a message on the Delta channel. Doesn't matter what channel you use. That's just the way I have it set up. And these invisible light fixtures, which are this lens flare, and that beam, when they receive a message, these are the four scripts that you need for single shot firing. On message receive delta, which again is going to be happening every four seconds, according to that script brain. The objects this, so the lights, it's going to target the player that is nearest to these particular objects. And it's going to target them at about five units off the ground, so somewhere towards chest level on a Spartan, and turn local off and it will take 0.2 seconds to reach the target. If the target cannot be reached in 0.2 seconds, it won't hit him. The second script that you need is a boundary check for damage ratio. 
So what we've got here is a little boundary for this light setup, and that's going to do everything you need for script two. When a player enters this boundary, the player in this boundary is going to take 10 damage, and it's also going to make a sound for all objects or players in this boundary of the base invaded warning sound, you know, so it'll buzz and you'll go, oh, I've been hit. It won't just take damage, it'll give you an audio cue. If it's on continuous, then before it despawns, it might apply way too much damage, so just have it set to enter. Also, on message received delta, which again is happening according to this script brain, every four seconds, on message received delta, these lights are going to wait 0.2 seconds before despawning, which, as was previously stated, is the amount of time that it takes for them to get to their target. So it will collide and it will despawn after applying the damage associated with it. And what your despawn is going to be set at is just this, so it'll despawn the actual projectile. Finally, we will have it set so that when it is destroyed or despawned, it will wait 3.7 seconds before respawning it. And you get 3.7 and you'll get any numbers that you need for this by taking the total time between shots, so four seconds, subtracting the 0.2 seconds that it takes for it to despawn in the first place, and then you add in another 0.10 just so that it has time to respawn and get the message again. You get the little audio cue, you get the little, little bit of damage, and the projectile fires every four seconds. And it is very lethal. But if I'm all the way out here, I'm slightly out of range. So it'll shoot at me, but it won't reach me before it despawns. If you wanted it to reach this far, all you would need to do is modify the amount of time it has before despawning. Now for multi-shot firing, which is going to be done by this automated chain gun turret we have set up here. So the best way to have this set up is with two scripts. You don't need zones, you could just have these on a round time, but we're gonna use zones to sort of signify the area that this thing can actually attack in. So, on boundary check by players, on a continuous rate of 0.05 seconds, it's going to send message alpha to the projectiles. The second script is the same as before, except it's going to be sending message barvo over the course of 0.15 seconds. So 0.15 seconds, I guess I should have said. And you want to have both of these set to condition interrupt off. And the best projectile to use for this, I have here the contrails, which is still misspelled incorrectly. It's been a year. So we have two of these. One of these is going to be message received alpha, and one of these is going to be message received barvo, which are the two scripts that these zones are going to send. And they're going to be almost identical in scripts, just a little bit different on the timing. So for the first projectile, we're going to say, on message received alpha, wait one tenth of a second before moving this object to target the players in the activator boundary. So it will only target players in either of these two boundaries. And it's going to take a tenth of a second to get there and it will aim at like stomach level. It doesn't matter what the verticality is that much. The second one, it's going to say on message received alpha, wait a tenth of a second and despawn so that the projectile will despawn either when it hits the target or if it misses the target and it will return to its previous location and on destroyed despawn spawn this is like what we had on the carbon but it had a wait timer before it it doesn't matter if you have a wait timer or not for this because we want it to respawn as soon as possible so i can go out immediately again barvo it will wait 0.2 seconds before despawning and the reason for that is just so that it can return to its location and respawn back in before it needs to get sent out. So, so it fires fairly rapidly. And I was trying to keep it from killing me so I could continue to talk about it. <laughs> but you see, I'm not in its zone, so it won't attack me, unlike the Jackal, which will attack constantly. So if I step in, then it'll attack. I could stand right next to it and it won't do anything. I can get on it and fire myself and it won't do anything. Get a nice little aerial view of this. It becomes lethal. So for tracking, we have this bad boy. This grunt right here with his rockets. He's got a spanker and he's ready to shoot something out of the sky or the ocean water. I don't know 
This is going to be our rocket. So here are the three scripts you need for tracking. Now I have it set up this way specifically so you can see that you don't have to have a message send, you don't have to have a boundary check for it to track and target again. So on round time, this is going to apply the damage. Let's, let's just bump it to 42 for kicks and giggles. It will apply damage to any object in this boundary. Now the second script is whenever an object or a player enters this boundary, so all, it's going to wait a tenth of a second before it despawns. That way it'll have time to apply the damage from this and then it will go away and respawn back here. And finally we have it on round time every tenth of a second and it's going to target anything labeled user Zulu and we have it set up this way just so I can show you that there are multiple different ways to do it. You can do it any of the three ways. You can do it by boundary check, you can do it by the nearest player, or you can do it set to a specific label. So I have it set to take 0.5 seconds to reach the target, which as you saw before, is 0.4 seconds longer before the condition re-triggers and it's told to target again. And I have it set up that way because that will allow it to track. If this number up here was larger, then it would go to the location that the object was at at that moment and stop moving until it was told to go again. This way, it's constantly being updated on the location of whatever object it's tracking. Now, how do you determine object labeled Zulu? We have this script over here in this huge boundary, as you can see, just the, the uh, this entire box and everything above it is what controls what's object labeled Zulu. So we have two scripts here. On boundary checked continuous, any objects that enter this zone is going to get a label change to Zulu. I have it set so that it says all players in this boundary, but it's better if it's set to all players because then if you have a boundary that's got like a boulder in it or a gun spawn in it, it won't track that. It'll only track the players. You could also say objects exclude, which will keep it from tracking objects. It'll only track players, but that, that isn't important. It's just extra. It's going to constantly add that to them while they're in this zone. The second script, when they exit the zone, it's going to remove the label of Zulu. And I just have it remove it from all players because if there's still a player in the zone that's Zulu, it'll get reapplied immediately. Since anything that's going into that zone is gonna get the label of Zulu, you need to have the targeting set to target only the nearest label Zulu. So that looks a little bit something like this. And we have our, you know, I'm gonna turn off the zone for that because it's just annoying looking at. That's the, that's the zone, that's the boundary that's gonna do the damage as we have learned previously. So we've got this thing here, this nice little uh, yellow submarine with a ghost, uh, with a banshee attached to it. Because we're underwater. Oh wait, so because we're underwater, now we're going to get that, that rocket, which will despawn after collision. It shouldn't even be there right now. It should only be there when I'm in the zone, but that doesn't matter. It's going to target us whenever we're in this banshee and we enter the zone. The second I come and enter this zone, there's the rocket, or there's our rocket effects it targets. And it just collided and did some damage. And it's set to something really high, so it's going to destroy me here in a second if I can't get away from it. And it will track aggressively until it collides because that's the way it's set up. Yeah, it just booped me right out of the actual submarine. But there it is. That grunt fired again. Now, the lower this number is for the tracking, the faster it's gonna reach the target and the less chance you're gonna have for escape. So if I have it set to 0.3, it's basically gonna hit me immediately as soon as I enter the zone. Oh, oh apparently I can just barely outrun it. Nope, it hit. And you can have this set as quick as possible for that it basically is just gonna track right to you and destroy. 
but if you have it that fast, you're gonna get booped by it. Which sort of makes sense. I mean, if you got hit by a rocket, it's not just gonna do nothing. So that about covers it for AI basics in terms of single shot firing, multi shot firing, and tracking. That being said, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.